Welcome fellow adventurers to the grand finale of my Wall of Souls building series. It's been quite a journey during the last two months, maybe not in terms of time we spent on this mock since we only had three episodes prior to today's finale, but the complexity of the techniques I used here. It's like our hero once said, it's not the years honey, it's the mileage. And we definitely took our mileage with this build, but overall it was totally worth the effort because this mock looks like nothing I've made before. So grab your fedora one last time and let us descend to the thrilling conclusion of our journey with Indiana Jones and let's get started right now. Ready to see how the mock turned out? Y'all sitting tight? <laughs> yes, we are very comfortable up here. Good, because before I'll show you the finished creation in all of its glory, we need to finish it first and I want to walk you through the process as we usually do. So, let's start with something simple, meaning the sarcophaguses that will decorate the two corners of the chamber. Well, at least I thought it's gonna be easy, but I couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I spent two days on trying out different combinations to make it as close to the source material as possible, and in the end, I settled with this shape. The technique may be a bit illegal, but it's not the first time I crossed that line in this series, and the final result is the closest thing I could achieve given the scale and the smooth shape of the sarcophagus, but I think it's looking very good right now. And now with this part established, let's see how it fits in place inside of the chamber. I just need to stick the bar in the jumper hole I have prepared here and adjust the ingot that will serve as feet that is also placed on the jumper. Later, to make it more outstanding from the rest, I will decorate it with some golden stickers from the original set but for now, let's leave them be because it's time to start making the Anubis statue. That's what scares me. So, the first thing I wanted to figure out were the legs for the statue to stand on, and I tried out a couple of different variations, but all were either not in the right scale or simply too ugly for me, so I changed the idea completely, and this is what I came up with the leg itself. I never used tires in this way in a mock, but I figure it would be the most fitting for such a circular shape, especially that the whole statue is supposed to be black with only a few golden details, so it's a great moment to use this technique. As the second leg is supposed to be bent in the knee, I made both of them slightly articulated and even though it's a bit fragile at the moment, it will be much better when I attach them to the belt. And this element took me like two days to even figure out how I will approach the skirt that Anubis is wearing, which was extremely hard due to the same problem as with the Ark of Covenant, being the range of parts in pearl gold is very limited, but I figured out such an approach that I'm sure you'll appreciate. But first, let's see how the legs fit in, and yeah, nothing more I could ask for here. It keeps the proportions of a human-like figure, so we can carry on because it's time to figure out the torso. And this is my first attempt using the golden wedges, but I think it will not be a good solution for this figure, as it is way too muscular and the statues from the movie look way leaner than this. But I really like how the stomach and the overall waist area turned out. It may be a bit thinner than the belt, but I guess I could later make it a bit smaller to fit the upper body. Nevertheless, I still need to figure out how to make the chest area to be more fitting to the source material, but now at least you can see how I figured out the skirt mounted to the belt. I think that these propellers will do a great job of covering the upper parts of the legs, and from what I've seen, they are very cheap on Bricklink, so there shouldn't be a problem getting a bigger amount of them. But for now, let's get back to brainstorming about the upper body, and I'll get back to you when I figure something out. Three days later. Okay guys, I made it. I took a totally different approach, making the chest with black pieces and only a few accents in gold held by some sausages and hinges underneath, and I am very happy of how it all turned out. 
And guess what? It still fits the correct proportions of a human body, so I really couldn't ask for more at this time. So now, let's take care of the arms and see how the figure will look fully assembled. Many hours later. So, as with the legs, I decided to go with tires as the main structure of the arms, and even though not perfect near the elbows, the overall look of the statue is just gorgeous. I've already gathered most of the parts I will need for the second statue, and the rest I will have to order on Bricklink where I already have a cart prepared with everything I will need, so now it's just a matter of few days to get the parts, and then I will take care of the desert scene upstairs, where now I have a little funny placeholder made by my daughter. Ok, luckily it was a very fast delivery, but I think we can skip talking about it too much since these are mostly the parts for the statue, so let's fast forward the unboxing and jump straight into finishing the first Anubis, because I just can't wait to see it completed. And what I made here is way beyond my first thoughts I had when I decided to make this mold. I mean, just look at it. The skirt technique was just a perfect choice for this build, the black body looks very smooth and the overall shape is just what this mod needed. And even though it took me over a week to get it to this state, since like I said multiple times making stuff like this is way out of my comfort zone, I am very happy of how the statue turned out and it was totally worth all the time and energy I spent on it. Of course, all of this wouldn't be possible without the inspirations I got from some insanely talented builders like Aero Conan or Mock Lobster, from which I took a couple of ideas on how to make human-like figures, so be sure to check them out on Flickr if you want to see some really impressive figs. But anyway, since I needed to make a virtual model of the statues to make the part list and make building of the second one easier, it got me thinking that I should make an instruction for it. What do you say? Would you be interested in building this bad boy for yourself? Let me know in the comments. Now getting back to the mock itself, with the hardest part done, it's time to take care of the upper part with the desert landscape leading to the hole through which Indy and Sela got into the Well of Souls. As you can see I've already outlined the part of the roof that will be held by the statues, so now I guess it's time for some good old fashioned time lapse of finishing the front wedge part and I'll get back to you in a minute or two. Ok, we have the front part done and I've also added some leftover stickered elements on the sides to cover the gaps. Since there should be some kind of a Star Wars accent here like in the movie and the sticker with R2 and 3PO that came with the set is dark yellow which wouldn't fit the color scheme at all, I used the runes from Boba Fett's throne room set which is a cool little easter egg I think. So now, as we are closer than ever to finishing the mod completely, let me just finish the desert and the second statue behind the scenes, because I guess you are all now tired of waiting and let's finally, after over 2 months of building, jump straight into the presentation of the mock, so enjoy! The well of the souls, huh? Come, come, look, look here, look, sit down, come!
And there you have it kid, fortune and glory. This is one of the most insane builds I've made and I just love it. It all turned out much better than I expected. The unusual shape of the whole build, the brain breaking techniques I used to get all of the angles, the sarcophaguses decorated with stickers look even better than before and of course the menacing statues in the middle all make up for a great eye-catching build which for sure will be one of my favorites. And of course we have the Ark of Covenant lifted by our heroes and lit up by lights from below which is a great center point showing one of the most iconic scenes from the whole franchise. To top it all up, I even made a small scene with Marion, Belloc and Todd accompanied by some soldiers, which in my opinion is a much better way of finishing the mock from above than just a plain tent surface. And to honor the classic LEGO team which was for sure inspired by indies movies, I even made a small adventurous easter egg right here on the table among all of the digging equipment. Oh, and of course, we cannot forget about... Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Can you guess how many of those are used in this build? Tell you what, the person that will be the closest to the correct answer in the comments will win a free instruction for the Anubis statue when I finish it. What do you say? So, with all that shown and said, I want to know what do you guys think about this creation. Be sure to let me know how do you like this mock, which part is your favorite and how did you enjoy the series overall. And of course leave a like if you enjoyed what you have seen here today and if it's your first time on the channel subscribe for more awesome mocks in the future and of course check out the ones I made previously. As for what's next in store for me, I will be starting my next build as soon as I wrap this video up and it will be something that many of you guys asked for multiple times. We are going back to the Wild West with a part of a collaboration I am making with my lagmates from Zbuduimito, so stay tuned because more on that will be revealed soon. I will see you guys in the next video here on Cube Brick, and until then, as always, make sure you keep it bricking.